A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain within me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. 
you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. So I ask, what does Simon Peter, featured in our gospel today, have in common with our saint of the day, Saint John Vianney? Peter, of course, lived in the first century AD and John Vianney did not appear on the scene for 1800 years later, lived in the, born in the seven, late 1700s and well into the 1800s. Both of these men, despite great obstacles were able to live and profess a profound faith in Jesus Christ. Simon Peter, despite obstacles such as his at times put my foot in my mouth or lack of faith at times, yesterday's gospel when Jesus bid him to walk on water with him and Peter boldly did, until he got scared and then started sinking. John Vianney, born in France during the French Revolution, not one of the sparkling times for the church in France, persecuted heavily. If you wanted to go to Mass when John Vianney was a small child, you had to go in secret to a barn where a priest would risk his neck and celebrate the Mass all the people there as well. And then of course following that was the Napoleon and the wars and poor John Vianney who wanted to be a priest was drafted into the army, somehow got disconnected with his group and then was labeled a deserter but eventually would become one of the great saints of the church. Despite all these obstacles, both of these men had a profound faith. What was it that gave St. Peter the ability to recognize that Jesus is the Christ? You are the Christ, you are the Messiah. He's the only one of the 12 that seemed to have got it and boldly proclaim it. And what was it in St. John Vianney's life that enabled him to still persist and persevere with every obstacle against him? He was not the brightest person in the world either, at least academically. And yet, he was one of the most loving people in this world, his love for God, as well as his love of his parishioners that he served there for so many years. And in Ars, France. They had a great relationship with the Lord. That's what it was. Now, Simon Peter had sort of an advantage over the rest of us. He got to live with the Lord for three years. But you know, if we really work at it, we can live our lives like we're living with the Lord as well. St. John Vianney had almost a childlike approach to that in his great love for our Jesus as well as for many of his favorite saints, as if they were always with him and around him. And that's sort of the attitude that we have to adopt as well if we really want to continue to deepen our relationship with the Lord. And then we have nothing to fear. And then we too can so easily, without even thinking about it, it comes from the heart, Remember what Jesus says in the first great commandment, to love the Lord your God, what what first? With the heart. All three synoptic gospels always list the heart first. The heart, not just the head. And that's what the relationships are all about. You know, we love our family members not because we think it, we feel it in our hearts. And our faith in Jesus Christ must be the same way. It's not enough just to know about him, what we've been taught. We must also feel it in our hearts. And that's what Simon Peter and St. John Vianney had in common, their hearts that loved our Lord so much. So let us do the same.
as we begin this new day together. Let us join in prayer as we humbly place our petitions before God. For priests, bishops, may they continue to be faithful instruments of God's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For all people in positions of leadership, may they use their influence to foster cooperation and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering from depression, May they be blessed with the support and assistance needed to begin the journey toward recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. For each of us, may we continue to grow in our faith and love for the Lord so we may give a more faithful and effective witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of our Mass this morning for John and Molly Coleman family. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died. May their souls rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, we ask you to hear and answer our many prayers, which we offer you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 